Hello and welcomes back everyone, and Wolf here with even more Pillars of Eternity. Where we last left off, we entered Galloway's Moor, which is right behind me here, and dealt with his Divine Favour quest in choosing the Lioness over the Bear. Which I think was the right choice personally for me, even though some of the arguments could be, obviously, it was how it was judged. It could have went either way, depending on your point of view, I suppose. Uh, let's go have a quick look at my inventory. We did get another unique one-handed sword. And we have a lot of... Actually, we're never probably going to use a battle axe or a, an exceptional club. So they are worthwhile selling in the near future. Let's get rid of the hides. We'll get rid of the, uh, the claw. We'll put the traps away. And yeah, the rest of it we can sell. Yeah, the rest is miscellaneous um, vendor goods. Okay. So we're on our way now um, up to Noonfrost. To do um, Rimgrant's uh, quest. Apparently some pale elf religious people have turned up, I suppose you could call them. And due to this... Easily brought to heal by the fire. Apparently, the waters are starting to freeze over due to whatever the Pale Elves are up to in here. So, we'll just do a quick save. And get ourselves in. What's our experience like? We are getting rather close. Especially so when we go back to Tia Evron and speak to the... Well, speak, commune with the gods once again. Because we'll probably get some experience from completing the quests entirely. The Prison of Ice. That's the, um, the quest for Alara. And into the White Void. Locate the Frost Hewn Breach. Which I'm guessing is what they call the doorway. Oh, kind of completed the major adventure. Very nice. More spoils await in the treasury chest and in, in the chest. I shall listen for. Sam, go stealthily in case we find a. Hello. Another area to um, discover. Yeah, this is gonna be a. This is not gonna turn out well. For the pale elves. The Pale Elf Vestal spots you with ice blue eyes. She shifts and knits her fingers together. Welcome to Noonfrost. Most of the temple is currently closed for sacred ceremonies to Rimgrant. The shrine is to your right. You're welcome to make your offerings to Rimgrant there, but the rest of the temple is off limits. Why is most of the temple closed? As I said, we're in the middle of secret ceremonies. They're rather complex and we don't permit outsiders to witness them. Others of my clan get rather touchy about them, which is why you should visit the shrine and take your leave. It seems the cold has spread from Noonfrost. Rimgrant is the god of winter. It's been many years since his temple was attended, so there's nothing strange about a little chill around the place now. If it bother you, if it bothers you, then perhaps you should go. Yep, that's not going to happen. I'm actually looking for the frost hewn breach. The barest flush rises in her pale cheeks. As I said, only the shrine in the eastern wing is open. The rest of the temple is closed. I suggest you make your devotions there and leave. Her cheeks flush, Watcher. Perhaps you misinterpreted that what you meant by the Frost Home Breach. <laughs> uh, go on, Jirens. Go tell her to her face. You probably quite happily will. We are going to be totally ignoring you, by the way. And if you get in my way, I am going to kill you. That's how kind I am. This is the way to the shrine, right? We should have asked her if she's seen a scout anywhere. 
The water from this well has frozen solid, trapping small fish from the lake underneath the temple. Reflected light dapples from the icy mirror behind the statue. Yeah, you think this is right? I don't think it is. I think your air uh, ceremony has really screwed the pooch. They're not really saying much either. Oh, we can pick the store as well. That door is easier to pick than this. Hello. What's that sound? The line and wrinkle of this warrior's river beaten frown has has been chiseled from the ice. Oh, hello. Nice and slow. We might as well am. Um, a use simple our, test. Use our mechanics while it's here. Oh, a, brook, a blue crystal key. Thank you very much. Sam, um, pick this door as well. I can do that. Oh, that's the sound of a door opening. I don't think they're going to be happy for us to go past here. So let's um, continue our exploration. No farther. Turn back and do not cross any doors. The halls beyond us belong to Rimgren and his faithful. Yeah, about that. Is this the doorway? No, no. Let's see if we can speak to um, uh, Veskel again and find out what's happening. See if she's seen the scout anywhere. Uh, what are you doing here? My clan journeyed from the White Dead Rens to pay homage to Rimgrant here at Noonfrost. We learned that this place has been abandoned for several years and we felt our duty to tend to one of the gods' oldest temples. It has been a long journey, but Rimgrant demands endurance. No doubt he will reward us for hours. Sagani's face is set in a grim frown. I hope it is. If that is all, sure. Oh, unlock with the blue key. I shall be discreet. Can we dop pop our head in here? This is not going to go well, and we're going to get caught. But. We'll see how far we get before things get a bit tense. A simple test. So quick save again. See how far we get. Let's close this. Ah, no, we might as well leave the door open. Despite this chill, the bedrolls feel feel warm. Thick patches of fur cling to the tent of leather. This a scroll of boiling spray, a lockpick, and a garnet. For some reason, none of the, none of the tool tips are telling us telling a us what it's test. what things are. A rapier, the white crystal key. Okay. Nice and quiet. Ah. To be fair, the scout's going to be locked behind one of these doors, isn't she? And the fire shows me something new. Mm -mm. Wend Roker. Two-handed quarterstaff. Superb! Holy hell! The I think this might be one of the first superb items we've found. Freezing Lash. P 
plus one enemies engaged. 1.8 weapons reach. Jurens, you you wheel uh, you're not gonna be happy to wield this weapon, I know you're not. Yeah, because your staff is the fiery staff there. And you're using a scepter, because a quarter staff is a close range weapon. Yeah. Magrin would not probably be happy if you switched your weapon out. But Oh well, it's happened. What a shame. Huh? Deal with it. What? Who has our highest I'm stealth? Here. I think it's Sagani. Sure. Let's see if we can see what's behind this source. It looks like a bookshelf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, quick save and looks like this button might open this wall here. Rim Grant, open your way to us. Because we are stupid and quite willing to let our ourselves and everyone around us freeze to death. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Well, we've been seen. You know we're going to fight our way out of this. As you near the platform, the temperature drops sharply. Something saps the very last bit of warmth from the air, leaving the breath of your lungs cold as it escapes your lips. You feel a doorway filled with glowing ice. Silhouetted against it is an elven man, his arms outstretched. Gods, it's gotten hard to concentrate. You shouldn't be here, Traveler. And the others of my clan won't be so lenient if they find you sneaking around. The Pale Elf turns to look at you, exhaustion written on his elegant face. He rubs one red eye with the heel of his hand, and you notice that his little finger has shriveled to a blackened nub. Rimgrant sent me to close the frost-hewn breach. His red eyes widen. You are a man of compassion. You would trap us here another hundred lifetimes? He shakes his head. We cannot continue like this. We have got to find a way into the white void. What do you mean? Rimergon's domain. A place where all things are mingled like snowflakes in a blizzard. It's a vortex of such chaos that even the Beast of Winter himself could not calculate the trajectory of the infinite particles of essence there. As souls are broken down over successive reincarnations, they become part of the White Void. It is a place where all things find perfect unity and freedom. Oh great, a religious fanatic. Continue. The frost-hewn breach is a weak spot in the barrier between us and the White Void. Thin ice on a frozen lake. We've come from the White that wends to find it. And you want to open this breach. And yet, can you not see what's already occurred around you? So that we can die. Permanently. We've lived more lifetimes than any mortal should. We've been faithful followers of Remagon since our earliest incarnations. He's the god of entropy. Why would he force us to be reborn again and again? But if anything could pass through the frost hewn breach, it would enter directly into the white void. This death is overdue for us. We just have to find a way through. To be fair, Rimgrant is the god of death. It's like endless, cold, unavoidable. But he's not the god of rebirth. That's kind of Baraf's um, stick. But let's see if we can give him the glowing ice crystal and see what occurs. Rimgrant, give me this ice shard to close the breach. Perhaps it will let you through. 
Oh, actually, reading that through, you might use it for the opposite means in which it's been given. Let's do it anyway, but I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, let's give him the glowing ice crystal. Gasville cups his hands around the shard. A token from the Beast of Winter himself? You've given us a great gift that's been denied to us for centuries. Thank you. He summons the rest of the Pale Elves and they gather around the frost hewn Breach. Yeah, the frost tomb breach is still open, and there's no way to go but back. I don't agree with that choice. God damn it! I was actually hoping, in that essence, to um. I'm trying to think now. I was hoping that the cutscene you would put the crystal in, and it would kill him. To be perfectly honest. Which is horrible to say, but that's what I was hoping would occur. Huh? Yeah. How the best... How the best do it for my character? See, he is compassionate, so maybe Balmung would feel for the Pale Elves in their situation. But at the same time, Balmung... has put his... own feelings aside for getting things done. Most of the time they coincide, sometimes they don't. I'm trying to decide which way I would go. I tell you what, when we have indecision, we will let um, RNG decide. I have my D20 here. Say one to ten, we will give the glowing shard to the pale elf again, and accept the consequences of that. And otherwise, if it's um, eleven to twenty, then we will close the frost hume breach. Right, let's do this. Sixteen. Right, okay. Orange G, Orange G, Orange G has decided for us. Yeah. Sure. So we'll just skip through this again up until a new choice has begun. Gods, it's gotten hard to concentrate. Rima Gon's domain. The frost-hewn breach is a weak spot in the barrier between us and the White Void, so that we can die permanently. But if anything could pass through the frost-hewn breach, it would enter directly into the White Void. This death is overdue for us. We just have to find a way through. Um, before we choose the first option, let us um, ask about the Pale Elves and their people. We call ourselves Glamfellen. Most here know us as Pale Elves. We hail from the White that Wends, a glacial continent at the southernmost edge of Aora. They're nomads, hardy lot. Some of the tribes especially occasionally spend a season in southern Nashitak. We received a watcher in our lands a season ago and paid her to tell us of the origins of our souls. We wanted to contemplate the essence that fills us and consider how Remergaunt might shatter and sow us once our days are spent. We were not prepared for what we learned. I don't think the Watcher was either. She explained that every one of us had been reborn whole into the clan over centuries, generations spanning back to the first days our people set foot on the right that rends. We had all been cut off from the mercy of our, our God promises. 
That night, we began awakening, experiencing fragments of our past lives, old hatreds, dead passions, tangled memories. It illuminated nothing but the realization that we're doomed to live a thousand pointless lives, never closer to the Rim Grand Salvation. Lilof's lips are pressed together, thin and bloodless. A dark expression hangs in his eyes. We want to die. We want Rim Grand to scatter our souls into the ether, that their million fragments might join the white void. My magic hasn't found a way through the frost room breach yet, but there must be one. Uh, Glasswell, I feel for you, and it's some in some instances and in some universes, I would have given you this um, token. But you can't oppose the will of a god. He laughs, but his eyes do not. You think that because Rimgrand spoke to you in a dream you can march in here and tell us about his will? Or that your elegant words will direct our faith? We followed him and suffered by him for almost as long as this purple has, temple has stood. Now we seek the very end that he promises. Do not lecture me about my duties to my god. Fine. If you want to die, I can help with that. Do we not have to resolve? We don't. Oh. Well, that's a bugger. Why did we lose the resolve? Oh, because we rested to the camp. Damn it. I think we could have probably solved this a lot more um, amicably. But not anymore. Uh-oh. Damn it, of course. Paladin there to assist. See if you can knock down Gashful. The sorceress isn't a priest. Oh, they've got a priest. Okay. Oh, and Ada's been corrupted. Great. Try to deal with the sorceress. Hey, Loth. Tell you what. Let's start throwing magic around as always. When in doubt, fireballs solve most of the and most most of the problems. Durance. Let's um get this going. Get the what's one this one do again again? Increases the damage reduction of our party, that's right. Hail off another fireball, please, even though it is going to injure some of our party. Aloff, no fireball, please. Durance, some more healing on the grieving mother. Still try to deal with the priest. 
How may I help? There we go. Yeah. Well, that hurt a bit. Huh? Two more Grim Roars for Aloft's collection. Yeah, we could have ended that probably a lot. Um, oh, and mm -hmm. another grimoire, it looks like. Yeah, that could have went a lot easier. Sure. But we didn't have the resolve to choose another option. Winter's Woes, Enrang Hadrit, and the Amatic God of Cold. So yeah, we're going to have to fight our way out now. The pedestal of black ice rises from the floor. Long finger-like ice crystals as hard and clear as diamonds surround and pierce the altar. A hole has been gouged out in the middle of the altar. Though it can't be more than a few inches deep, it sucks at the air around you. Uh, yeah, let's plug the hole. The shard fits perfectly. As it settles into place, the cold around the altar dissipates. Similarly, the portal before you seems to thicken, and the mysterious seepage tapers off. And we gained an extraordinary um, reputation bonus with the fangs. We are classed as an ally. Okay. Didn't realise we were actually affecting those as well. I'm on the trail. So now we still need to search for the Fang Scout. Uh more paladins. Uh. Holy hell. How the hell did they turn all my characters? Durance, um, cast one healing on Sagani, please. Oh, and another sorceress has come to join the party. Of course she did. Itumac. Try to keep some of them knocked down. We need to deal with the priests more than anything. healing. Actually, we should have, um, you see if we can, um, charm. Nice, it worked as well. How do you like it when you get charmed? Not doing too well. Etomax went down. You focus there. See if we can mark him. Let's 
try this ability out. You're not get yeah, it's like a taunting ability. Interesting. We never, never really use Into the Fray too much. We never really have much of the opportunity to do so. Even more grimoires, holy hell. Mm -hmm. To be fair, all the grimoires are probably going to have ice abilities on them anyway. Just quick save. We might as well go this way and loot what we can while we're here. Steady does it. Right, some more lockpicks, thank you very much. Nothing is closed to the perceptive mind. Well, we close the door behind us again. Good job. And now we just walk through the door because we're that damn good. This is here. This is here. Uh oh. More paladins come to play. Impressive. I'm surprised you went on that long, but you had a lot of air uh, deflection. The other two paladins and compared to the first one. Right. Pale Elf Paladin is hiding behind the door waiting for us. Let's quick save. Somehow she's barely injured, so Paladin behind the yeah. door's injured herself somehow. I'll see what I can find. I'll see what I can find. Uh, hmm. Decisions, decisions. Which way should we go? This looks like a way we may be interested in. Yeah, actually. This looks like a room that may be useful. Something over there. Thanks, Jurens. Scroller, Scroller Maelstrom. We need ten law to cast it. Do we have anyone with ten law? I think the answer is no. Kana may have. Oh, Aloth has ten law. Cool. I can do that. Hey, hey, we recognize your name. A young Orlin scrambles on the stone floor. Pressing her back against the wall and baring her teeth at you. Her fur is patchy and matted. As you step into the room, she squints and turns her large ears towards you, a heavy sigh escaping her tiny body. Beasts take me. My eyes mistook you for one of them. Please, get me out of here. What happened to you? When Noonfrost began freezing the lake, my sister Lara sent me to seek out the cause. The pale elf outside has seized me before I could report back. These pale elves are behind it. They showed up in Twin Elms not long ago, saying they wanted to see the upkeep see to the upkeep of Noonfrost. I don't know how, but they opened the frost hewn breach at the back of the temple. It sucks warmth and life straight into their frozen god's barren domain. They've got to be stopped. It's only a matter of time before the cold spreads further. 
Uh, it isn't safe yet. Wait here until I clear the path. Yeah, looks like we'll, we'll clear the path for her. Make sure she doesn't die on the way out. We're not too far from the exit, actually. Keeping quiet. Oh, that was a bad thing to do. Aloff, throw magic. Endurance. Damage reduction, please. Holy hell. Well, that's not going to help you too much. Focus on the priests first, I guess. Endurance. What abilities should we use? Invokes the benediction of the priests. God, imbuing allies in the area effect with accuracy and might bonuses while our enemies re receive penalties to the same. Yeah, that sounds good. Get a firewall going. Uh, let's try to charm you and see how you like it again. Endurance. Oh. Target. The priestess here. Whoa, what the? Everyone's taking suddenly a lot of damage, which I don't approve of. There's a paladin there, that's why. Wow, we took a lot of damage there. Ada, try and deal with this paladin. Itamak, deal with the priest. Let's go. Wow, we took so much damage in that fight. Sure. I don't know what caused all that AOE damage. Maybe because we were standing in the flames ourselves, but. Looks like we've gained enough experience for Balmong and Ada to level up at least. We'll still try to make our way out, and you know how I always like to try and level up all my characters at once. I'm on the trail. We will quick save though. The grieving mother's health isn't looking too great, and we are running low on our magic. We may just want to rest up just to be safe. Ah, screw it. We have one more good fight to do. Endurance, throw a seal. Yeah, come and see us. Ada, put a wall, a force. Here. Creates a zone of defined favor, increasing might and resolve. Sure. Uh oh, Itamak, don't be crazy. Put a wall of fire there, because why not? Oh great, not good. Right, I 
That's what we wanted. Not the best situation in the world. I hate all these charm abilities, they drive me mad. That's Ada himself. Yeah. Let's pull back slightly. There you go. So then not all our melee characters can focus properly. Got a lot of fine items, there's probably some exceptional hiding amongst them. We'll have a proper look at it once we've got out of the noon frost itself. I'm on the trail. Ah, thankfully we didn't have to deal with. I think there's two paladins here. I think that's all that's remaining. Uh oh. No. is coming to join us. Very nice. One thing I noticed though, the um, Pale Elf, the Pale Elf Priest that had a half decent deflection as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the area is now clear. We'll use fast mode to get back up to um, Alwa. And let know to make a run for it. Make a run for it. Go! She turns towards the exit, her large ears angled forwards. As fast as my feet can carry me. Uh, she scrambles for the exit. At the door, she clances back behind you. Thank you, outsider, and be careful. Sam, so, let's just make sure she escapes. Oh, it's this way. Nice. And Durance and Sagani had enough experience to escape, as, um, to level up as well, to escape. We'll go back to um, Galloway's Moor and speak to her sister. And let her know. Obviously, she'll know that her sister's made it back safe and sound. Oh! Alwa the Olin stands under the open sky, taking deep breaths of fresh air. Feels like I've been reborn. Come by the moor sometime. The rest of the fangs will want to meet the cunning outsider who freed me. Yeah, right. Do we need to go see her? Um, yeah, return to Laha. We'll do that now before we end this video. Another quest put aside. And then we only need to complete one more quest for um, the God's Divine Favour. And that is actually on its way to the Temple of Halia to the north. We have a few more side quests actually do on route though. We'll probably do those first. What, what purpose brings you here? I found Alwa. Your own eyes have seen her. I freed her from Noonfrost. She's just enjoying the fresh air before she returns. She releases a gasp of relief. You accomplished a great service for the Fangs and myself. I was wrong about you, outsider. I did not see you truly. Please, accept a gift worthy of your honour and skill.
And that's Alva returning, yes. We gained experience. We gained more reputation, and we gained an item, Scales of the Raven. A medium armor. It's a fine set of armor. Plus two stealth, plus two perception. Well, I suppose that makes sense. With a name like that. Durance, you might as well keep your staff there. Hmm. We have a lot of items I'll have to sift through. Uh, oh, and everyone's got experience to level up. Hmm. Decisions then. Activate fast mode. What I will do is I will spend the next 10-15 minutes leveling up, depending on how long it takes for all of my companions, um, all the characters here in my party. If no one wishes to stay behind and watch the leveling up process, feel free to end this video now, basically. And in the next video, as I say, we'll travel north to the North Wild after selling all our miscellaneous goods. But yeah, expect me to travel up north now. Basically, explore the North Wild and not only deal with the Dirodian Glanfarfen conflict that no doubt's going to kick up uh, with the Dirodian scavengers in the area, but see if we can find the Hunter Fiorm and find out what actually happened um, during the Blood Hunt, I think it was called. But yeah, if you want to stay behind and um, watch the leveling up process, we'll begin that now. And if not, well, I'll see you next time. So, let us begin. As always, we'll start with Balmung and go from left to right. We probably need more lore for Balmung now, because lore's coming up as um, dialogue options more than anything else. So we'll put all the points in the lore. We have a new Paladin class ability we can choose. Ah... Uh... We don't need Inspiring Triumph, I don't think. 10 seconds, plus 7 defend, plus seven to all defences. Reinforcing. Commands an ally to redouble their efforts, improving their deflection. Inspires urgency in one of the Paladin's allies, increasing their attack speed. Uh, to be honest, none of these are really great. We could take Lay on Hands, but it's only plus 76 Endurance, which is like half health for some character. We can use it twice per encounter, I suppose. Yeah, we'll take Lay on Hands. It is a well-known Paladin ability, and this might actually be the last class ability we get to choose. Uh, we are level 11, and I still believe the cap is 12. I haven't checked that out um, since I heard about it in the steam forums maybe they've patched differently but at the moment i'm just guessing that this is the second last level we're going to air uh, receive and we can't use a new talent okay one down Ader, you've always been putting your points into survival and athletics you might as well continue putting them into survival and gain a bit more consumable duration, because that'll come in handy later on. Yeah, we'll do that. And you can choose a new fighter ability. Once per encounter, we can gain plus 20 to all defences for 17 seconds. Wow. That's actually really good. Armoured Grace. Oh, Unbending. Oh, wow, we have a lot of abilities. We actually were going to choose Clear Out originally, weren't we? It's like a cone, an area of effect... But we chose something else. What's um, unbending? The fighter draws strength from his or her indomitable spirit, causing them to regenerate 50% of endurance lost from an attack over time. Unbroken? The fighter refuses... To oh, is that a passive ability? No, three times per rest, okay. Once per encounter, it's a passive ability, refuses to be vanquished. After being knocked out, the fighter stands back up with a portion of his or her endurance healed and temporary bonus to the deflections and all damage reductions. So he gets knocked out, he revives of half endurance, 
plus 5 damage reduction, plus 10 to all his defences. Well, the main defences, not like the mind control ones or poison abilities. Hmm. And they last for like 35 seconds. That's pretty good. A fight a guardian stance? I think you already have a stance though. But it gives a... Oh, but it reduces your accuracy. And once per encounter, we can use Discipline Barrage. Barrage. Plus, plus 10 to accuracy. The clear out ability is tempting. Do we have one? Oh. Plus 15 damage with our sword. Is tempting. Finally get some more damage for your one-handed M um, Saber right now. We'll take the clear out ability. Be good to have another AoE, especially on the front lines. Especially if we're going to be forcing some enemies to fight in corridors. Like, uh, sorry, in doorways. Where you'll get the most use out of that. It's not a great area of effect. The length of it's not massive. But yeah. Sure, why not? Uh, Durance. We can't level up your mechanics right now, which is a shame, so we'll wait. And you've gained some new priest abilities. Cleansing Flame, which attacks deflection. Fills a ball of holy fire at the enemy that purges its protections and speeds its doom. Does continuous burn damage for 5 seconds and accelerates a timer for all beneficial effects. Except heals, of course. Crown of the Faithful. Crowns allies and the glory of the priest's god imbuing all allies in an area effect with bonuses to perception, intellect, and resolve. Minor intercession. Restoring endurance and reducing all durations of negative effects. Prayer against treachery. Granting bonuses against charm or dominate afflictions. Sparks of the souls of the righteous. Ignites a powerful zeal within allies that may manifest in an aura that shocks enemy any enemies near them. Okay. Oh. Level 2 spells can be used per encounter. What? Does that last ability? Is it a uh, AoE? It is. So it's not just a single target. That'll be good. We could do it for, like, well, all our characters, basically, but especially our front-line engaging uh, characters. The Grieving Mother. Hmm. We don't really need much for you, to be honest. Let's, um, boost your survival up once again for consumables, maybe, in the future. And we can choose some more powers. Might as well go for the level 6 powers. Mind Plague. Destroys an enemy's memory with calculated accuracy, confusing and dazing them before rapidly jumping to five other enemies. De disintegration? Ciphers can directly target allies and enemies with powerful soul-focused effects. These focuses cost focus. Oh, okay. Well... Oh, Disintegration, there you go. Burns away the erythral sinew that holds together the mind, body, and soul of the target enemy, causing it to rapidly take raw damage. Targets that have, zero, that have their endurance reduced to zero disintegrate into non-existence. Well, that's just fun. An amplified wave manifests the target ally's mental strength and projects them outward force for, forcefully. Causing a way a shockwave that inflicts crushing damage. Oh. Okay. So we could use that say on Balmonger Ada, and from them the crushing damage will be forced um eleven, almost twelve meters around them. Yeah, that sounds good. Sigani, you're up. Um don't really need much more stealth. I think you're stealthed enough now for how we are in this game. We'll just boost your survival some more. 
and we can choose one ranger ability. Swift aim, but it's minus accuracy. Defensive against AoE attacks. Plus 50 damage against targets affected by a damage over time. See, we probably have some of these, um, some of the dots, but we don't really use them too effectively. Binding roots could be fun. Arrow sense, plus 15 deflection against ranged attacks. Vicious aim. Minus attack speed. Master's call. Calls the ranger's animal companion to his or her side, causing the companion to move back to the ranger at increased speed. Ignoring engagement and knocking enemy, any enemies in the way prone. Oh. Or stunning shots. Takes advantage of enemy distraction while engaged with the ranger's animal companion. Stunning the enemy as a secondary attack. When the ranger hit lands a hit or critical hit. Oh. Sure. That's a really good ability. As long as um, Sagani's targeting the same enemy as Itumak. Ready, watcher. Aye. And Alof, last but not least. Um, we might as well keep boosting your lore so you can use the scrolls in the future. And you have some level 6 spells we can choose from. Holy hell, that's a lot. Let's have a quick look at them. Creates a field of arcane energy around the caster, reflecting hostile targeted spells up to 5th level back for up to 15 spells. Capricus Hex unleashes a volatile hex upon enemies in the area of effect, causing them to become dazed, sickened, or paralyzed for almost 30 seconds. Chain Lightning. Becomes a living generator for a powerful bolt of electricity that streaks out in a straight line and bounces off walls, harming anything caught in its path. It can't hit our own people. Tempting though, I do like chain lightning. Schzal's martial power. Cass temporarily sacrifices arcane power for martial might. Ah, uh, no. Death Ring calls on a black ring of necrotic energy in the being that spreads out in all directions. It is from the... Oh. Causing corrode damage to everything it touches. It only says foe AoE though. Not necessarily. My allies. It doesn't say target. It says foe AoE. And it is quite a big radius. So that's rather tempting. Gaze of the Adragan. Gives the caster the mystifying gaze of the Adra creature that provides the spell's name namesake. Petrifying enemies within an area of effect. Minolet has precisely piercing burst. This is basically magic missiles. The very, there's, like, Minolet has different versions of it. And they're more powerful than each other, basically. Creates a burst of deadly force around a caster, causing the enemies in the immediate vicinity to take piercing damage, bypassing their damage reduction. Holy hell, that's a lot. Or, Nina Gruff's Freezing Pillar. Calls down an enormous spike of ice, called pulsing freezing damage on anyone in the area of effect and creating volatile circular frost. That can hobble anyone. I think that's what the um, crystal spiders may have been using against us in the endless paths. That was doing a lot of damage. But the piercing burst just sounds awesome. And again, it's another full AoE ability. Not as much of a radius as the death ring. But that's kind of what Aleph's good for. And level 2 spells can be used now per encounter. Okay, everyone's am um, leveled up and happy. So as I say, yeah, I'll end this video here. This of course has been Anfwolf with even more Pillars of Eternity. Uh, let's have a quick look. We need 11,000 experience to gain our final level. 
We'll get there eventually. We may get there by the end of the story campaign. I'm not too sure. But yeah, when we come back, as I say, we'll head up to the North Wild once we've sold all our, all our miscellaneous goods. Uh, we can probably do that here. Uh, there was a merchant just standing here. Though we may want to go rest up in the Celestial Sapling once again to get our bonuses. So yeah, I'll see you all next time. Until then, bye bye now.